Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner's Code, a place for you to learn with me as I dive deeper into the coding world. Before I start, if you haven't yet, please check out my new website for blogs all about Python or my posts on Instagram that go into details about the basics of Python. Or if you're looking for source code for some projects, then by all means, check out my GitHub where there are over 70 projects that you can explore. The links for these will all be in the descriptions below, so please do check them out. Also, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos from me as I teach you through the basics. Today, we are going to be looking at the built-in library math. There are a lot of methods that come with the math library, including full documentation on the Python website. So I will leave the link in the description below so you can check them all out. Okay, so to start, we are going to be showing you how to import a library. Now, there are a lot of different libraries out there that don't actually come built in with Python. And to install those, you will have to pip install first. Now, that is a lesson for down the line. But to start with, math does come built in. So what we can do is import math. Now, that is the first way of getting the library imported. We could also do import math as M. Now, M is arbitrary. It can be named whatever you want. However, it is always best to name it something that makes sense. Now, doing this, it just allows you to reference it as a different name throughout your code. Sometimes libraries called speech recognition are quite long to type. So importing them as, a, as an arbitrary name, such as like SR, makes a lot more sense. Now, we can also import a specific function or method from the library. Now, to do this, it will be from math import and then seal but i'm going to actually delete those two and just import the math library now as you've seen i've just run it and nothing no errors occurred which is perfect so what i'm going to do first is just create a variable called num and assign it to the number of 4.45 now what we can do is if we wanted to round this number up we can use the seal function which stands for sealing so math.seal, and then we can pass in the number. So if I shift enter, you'll see that this is rounded up to five. Now, one thing to know about the seal function or method is that if I was to do 4.01, it would still round up to five because it rounds up to the closest number above it. If I wanted to get the number to round down, then I can use the math.floor method and pass in none, and that will return four. Now, if I was to change this to 4.94 and run that, seal goes up to 5 and floor stays down at 4. So I'm going to put this back at 4.45 and then just run them both. Next, we can use the power method. And the power method is just like with normal math arithmetic. If you haven't actually seen my previous video that explains this, uh, I will leave a link in the description below or a card above. But what we can do with math is what we can do with just normal Python is four to the power of three, which will raise four or cube four, and that will return 64. Now with math, what we can do is math.pow, and we can put in four and three, which will also return 64. And we can even put in the variable twice. So it raises 4.45 to the power of 4.45. Now we can also do math.square root. And if we do, if I wanted to make, if I wanted to find out the square root of four, I can even do math.floor num inside the math.square root. And that will return two because two is the square root of four. Another way of doing this just using Python would be, I will just comment this one out quickly, would be exactly the same as um, the double multiply sign, but to the power of 0 0.5, and that will also square root. And I'll just uncomment that. So next we can just get the value of pi. And to do this, we can just type in math.pi and it will return pi to a certain amount of numbers. We can also use math.e, which stands for Euler's number, and Euler's number is 2.718, uh, 
and we can even use this in the exponential. So math dot exp and then to the power of num and this will times 2.718 to the power of 4.45 here, which returns 85.62. Next we can do math dot gcd, which stands for greatest common denominator. And if I was to do 12 and 50, this will find the highest number that goes into both 12 and 50. So if I enter that, we return 2, because 4 doesn't go into 50, 6 doesn't go into 50. So if I was to make this simpler for you, if I did 150, then we get 50 back, because the greatest common denominator in both is 50. Next, we can use math.i square root, and this will actually round down the number. So if I was to put in 11, it will round down the square root of 11, rather than giving us a long decimal place number. And finally, we can also use the factorial method. Now, factorial is just a way of timesing its a number by the numbers below it. So, it, for example, if we took 5 and did 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and if I just comment that out, we will get 120. Now, because our number is 4.45, if I use the math.seal method and pass in the number and then get rid of that, we should also get back 120, which we do. That's all for today's video. We briefly looked over the math library. Remember, there are a lot more methods that we can use from this library. So if you're wanting to find specific methods for working with angles and radians, then do check out the documentation. If there's anything you'd like me to cover further, please don't hesitate in reaching out to me by dropping a comment below on Instagram or through my website. Stay tuned as in my next video, I will be looking at comparison operators in Python and how to use them. If you liked what we've been through today and you want to learn more, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date. Thank you and see you next time.